want you to see Joey. Joey is 13 months. Joey, this beautiful child of God, is a Down syndrome baby. Have you seen Joey on the bus or the airplane or at an amusement park? Joey, uh, hi. Joey is a child very, very capable of experiencing joy, happiness, and guess what he wants? Where's Mama? Where's Mama? Is that Mama right there? Up until 1975, half the population of mental institutions in many places was made up of so-called down babies, down children. Now, however, we are more enlightened than we used to be, and we've come to discover that down babies can grow up to be productive, happy, useful, creative, intelligent, adult. <laughs> and we're counting on you to do that too, Joey. Down syndrome is a largely misunderstood uh, medical problem, not unlike other diseases that, or syndromes that can affect cognitive ability, ability to learn. Probably will take Joey longer to learn than others in his class, but those who are close to this issue believe that more down babies or young people can be, so, can be mainstreamed, as we call it, put into classes. And after maybe a little snickering in the early years, these children grow up to be the pals of those with whom they go to school, just like your children. You know that a Down syndrome baby is more likely to happen as the mother ages. About one in 1,000 children born in North America are Down babies. It's about one in 1,500 if you're between the ages of 20 and 24, if you're the mother. When you get to be 40, the odds increase, one in 100. So we have countless numbers of, of these children around the world. And incidentally, many of these children are adopted by loving parents. And yes, some parents who have Down babies have another baby. We can only speculate on how nervous they might be during that second pregnancy. But if you have one Down baby, it doesn't mean you'll have another one. You know about amniocentesis and the increasing uh, use of that technique to determine whether your pregnancy in involves a down baby. And here's one down baby that's here, and we're glad he is. And he's going to grow up to be a productive adult. Guess who else is here? Here is a uh, three-time Emmy winner. You've come to know and love her on Cagney and Lacey. You also know she's Lacey, and I want you to know she stars in a movie of the week in which she plays the mother of a Down syndrome baby. Please welcome Tyne Daly. Yeah. Well, you're a hit, kid. You don't have, you can just sit there like, uh, just be regal for the, uh, for the year. <laughs> Among other things, this is a very honest movie. You, uh, you're apparently, a, uh, your character in this film is a, uh, which incidentally is a CBS made-for-TV film, which will air in November. Eight. Eight, eight. Uh, the, you're a, you're a real go-getter. Not unlike, <laughs> uh, you're the role you play as a cop. Uh, you're a can-do person, mother, achiever, super mom, and whammo. And like a lot of parents, you really weren't sure what hit you with this child. And you go from, I can fix it, I can do it, no matter what it takes, to a recognition of you can love and you can help a baby like this. But you've also come to the realization that this is no picnic. Yeah. Our, our intention in the film is to be very straight and not to, not to uh, uh, pour any oils on the water. I, I have a particular and abiding loathing of categories. I think that it's very important that we look at each other as individuals. And what has happened in, through history is that we've looked at, at people with Down syndrome and given them a name, a false name like Mongoloid, or the village idiot, if you will, hurtful names. Non-persons, they used to call them. Non-persons. Uh, uh, and, and I think that uh, the story of, of uh, Joanna Goodman, as we call her, who is in uh, disguise as Emily Kingsley, and other mothers that Emily has known. She's the expert here. Um, her journey in terms of acceptance is a very interesting one to me 
because she she begins to see her her child as himself and uh, I think that it behooves us all to look at each I, other as individuals. I do too and we should uh, I know you don't uh, you don't want uh, necessarily the Nobel Prize for this because you're doing what you love to do and that is to not only create illusions as you do so well as a performer but also uh, every once in a while a script comes along that you apparently really want to just throw yourself right into and this is one it's titled Kids Like These and its author is Emily Pearl Kingsley uh, which is based on your experience. You have a son, uh, Jason, who's 13. Yes. You know about the, uh, was this, this your only child? I have two big stepsons from my husband's first marriage, who I think of as my sons, but they are this grown and married. This is my one and only child. Biological, as we might say. Yes. Sounds so impersonal. What did the doctor say? Incidentally, uh, how long after the delivery of your child did the doctor say anything? Uh, we were told that as my husband was told, which is itself considered a no-no nowadays, that's now accepted that you tell the parents together. So this particular doctor made every mistake you can imagine. He told my husband and, and gave him the terrible job of coming and telling me. Uh, this happened about 12 hours after the birth, but we know many families who are told on the delivery room table. The, ba the baby is just barely out of the mother's body and the, the news is being broken to mm -hmm. them. So, so was, it was your, your husband then who told you? Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, was there any sensitivity at all ex exercised by the physician who told your husband? None whatsoever. What did he say? <laughs> he told us that this child, first of all, he used the antiquated term mongoloid, and he said that this child w had zero potential. He would never walk, he would never talk, he'd never think, he'd never read, he'd never write. He was Put him do in an institution before... And tell our friends and family that he died in childbirth. Uh, ahead, and this, uh, this audience is gasping. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this was uh, rather common, was it not? A drama I I with regard to this particular birth anomaly. Uh, a lot of doctors would just quite literally drop the tools and run from this. Exactly. I'll hand you over to Diane Crutcher, who had the identical experience on the other side of the country and was told the same, the same thing. Let's talk to Diane Crutcher. Diane is Executive Director of the National Down Syndrome Congress. You have a 13-year-old daughter, Mindy. Uh, whom we'll meet in a moment. Uh, we'll also meet uh, the Kingsley child, uh, Jason child, I should say, a young man. He's 13. Uh, tell me about this, Ms. Crutcher. You were uh, 13 years ago. What happened? Right. Uh, my husband and I were 25, expecting our second child and expecting everything to be as it's always supposed to be. We all, we all think these things happen to other people. And we found ourselves actually just about opposite of, of Emily's situation. The doctor told me and he used the antiquated term and he suggested that we not bother uh, because nothing would ever do any good. She would be a vegetable, an idiot. She would never know I was her mother. And those were his closing words as he threw the papers for institutionalization on my bed. He didn't even come through the door, did he? No, he didn't come through the door. He stood at the open door and my roommate had her baby. They wouldn't bring me mine because he didn't want me to get attached. Mm -hmm. And then I told my husband. And you probably couldn't breathe for about a week. I mean, I don't know, you know, how do you get up off the floor after this kind of punch? Um, you know, I, I kind of view it as peaks and valleys. When she was born, it was a high time in our life. It was a true peak. And then we hit the lowest valley ever. Uh, we're both relatively extroverted people. And I remember my husband saying, do you think we'll ever smile again? We were so low. And I went down to the nursery to see her because I thought if I saw her, I would know he was wrong. I was still coping and using defense mechanisms, yeah. and I needed to know he was wrong. And I went to the nursery, and she wasn't in sight, and I tapped on the window, and immediately I had a lot of well-meaning well nurses and staff trying to take me back to the room because she wasn't in the nursery. And I asked why, and they said they'd put her in the back nursery and pulled the shade so we wouldn't be embarrassed. You know, um, I heard Hubert Humphrey interviewed once on this very issue. He has a grandchild, That's doesn't right. he? That's right. And I thought it was so honest. Her Hubert, as we can, I assume, affectionately call him, uh, the doctors came down and they said to uh, Muriel, Muriel and Hubert, the grandparents, your, your grandchild is a retired child, whatever. And he said, no, he wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. He would not accept mm -hmm. it. The doctors didn't know what they were talking about. It can't be. Mm -hmm. Rejection is no doubt mm -hmm. about it. Number mm -hmm. one uh, mm -hmm. response, isn't mm -hmm. it? All, all the different phases that go into the classical mourning the, the anger, yeah. the rejection, the, the denial, all of those phases yeah. that they describe the mourning process are the same phases that you go yeah. through in this yeah. uh, The former vice president, as I recall, said, how do you know that? 
How do you know that? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, look at this. This is a great baby, I'll tell you. I mean, uh, he, he, he is good. Yeah. Joey's okay, right? He's all right. Uh, and at three in the morning, he's sleeping just like all uh, all of us are supposed to be. Is that so, or is he? No. Tell me, no. All right. <laughs> well, you got to be honest about this, Mom. Uh, tell us what's. Uh, take the mic from my hand there. Okay. What's different here? I mean, what, just tell us some of the challenges. Well, I don't know if everybody knows, but Joey is our adopted son. We adopted Joey when uh, in June 23rd of this year, and he's just the love of our life. And. Um, He's just like any other baby. I mean, it'll take him a little bit longer to learn things, but we just love him to death, like pulling ties. <laughs> you can see he's perfectly normal. <laughs> um, but how soon, how, what's in, I have a mic here. You, now you're the host. How soon, um, when do you get the whole picture? In other words, you don't know when, you're not sure yet how he's going to, how, well, he will be able to keep up with his so-called peers yes. who would fall in the average uh, educable level. Uh, well, nobody is. really knows. Even with, uh, I hate to use a cliche, but your normal children, no one really knows. And we just take it day by day. I don't set any high priorities for him, and we just love him to death. Yeah. You, you know. Uh, you, uh, you're getting very good at this. A little too good if you... Uh, you were a foster child, is that it? Foster mother. Foster mother, I'm sorry. And that's how you met this child. And you said, oh, I can't. That was it. We fell in love. <laughs> Look at that face. How could you not fall in love? <laughs> Phil, what Karen says is very to the point that if, if somebody presumed to come into your room in the maternity ward when you'd given birth to a so-called normal child and yes. gave you the next the next 30 years of that child's life and said to you, well, this child is going to be a high school dropout and is going to steal a car at 17 and will have a drug problem at 18, you would say, that's, that's crazy. How can you, you know, how can you predict a child's future? But these children, the children with Down syndrome, they've been getting away with predicting their whole future for centuries and nobody ever stopped and said, wait a minute, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, we, we, uh, this is who you are because we say this is who you are and therefore don't appeal don't our try, decision. Don't try, don't bother, don't work. Yeah. But they have nothing to base it on. Now They're let me get you in here, uh, Harold. <laughs> uh, you, you've been more than patient. Uh, Harold uh, Silverman joins us with his son, Brad. Brad, we should say, is 21. And I am very pleased to say on behalf of his father, who's also very proud, Brad has graduated from high school with the rest of his class, and he is currently in his third year at Pasadena City College. Tell you this, uh, you did real good choosing parents, I'll tell you that. Um, well, tell me something about this, Pops. Now, you've had to... Uh, <laughs> or dad, whatever the word may be. Uh, first of all, you had to deal with the first of the, the information. There huh? was no information. None. 21 None years what? ago, what? Middle no, Ages? Nothing. Nothing. Really? No, everything that you heard everyone else say, we went, that's what they told us. Yeah. Harold, please institutionalize him. It'll be the best thing. Forget that about us. He was born. Yeah. He, he will he will live maybe to eight or nine years maybe he uh, will never be potty trained he'll never be able to read he'll never be able to walk what do you want to take him home for yeah well I was too stupid I I couldn't grasp this I'm Humphrey Humphrey whatever his name is Hubert yeah Hubert, Hubert. the vice president yeah. right I I couldn't uh, understand that you did the same thing that Humphrey did right. I understand yeah I got two normal boys they're forty five and forty one now it's your third child it's not third child. Normal. I mean, I couldn't believe that such a thing could, could be. It's right. impossible. Right. Let's put it that way. So I said, no, forget it. And we're taking him home. And I said to my wife, what should we do? Nana. And she said, we're going to take him home. He's going to be like a, every normal. We're going to treat him like every normal child. Yeah. He's going to be like the one of the family. He's not going to be any different. And that's it. Make sure he's like everyone else. Treat him like everyone else. They're going to be slower. But they're not mentally crazy. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just slow. Right, Nothing which, more. which is uh, an adjective used by not a few of my own teachers uh, about <laughs> me. Uh, Brad, uh, you're at uh, Pasadena City College, uh, and where'd you go to high school? Pasadena High School. 
Yeah. And what was that experience like? Was it good? A lot of buddies and you had pals? Oh, yes. In fact, um, I have a big brother to me in high school. His name was Ivan Harris. And um, she, she, was, she was behind me, you know. My friend, how she um, helped me. He, he kind of was your pal during high school. Yeah, she still good for me. Uh, Pasadena High. Does Pasadena High have a football team? Oh, yeah, Pasadena High School Bulldogs. Yeah, are they any good? Uh, so so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, how's everything at Pasadena City College? Okay, so far. Yeah. Well, uh, so far, you don't expect problems. No problems at all. Yeah. Well, you're a certainly a you're a good-looking young man, and it's quite obvious that you're a talented one as well. Uh, I know that. Uh, one thing's he's apparently an expert ping pong player, and that he's a very good ping pong player. He's a he's a dolphin in the water, fantastic swimmer. He's an unbelievable shot with the basketball. He plays the clarinet. He's giving concerts. He plays the organ. He plays the piano. This kid's unbelievable. Really? I, we believe we believe you. We believe you. Boy. Is Jennifer here? I thought so. <laughs> you're a very, very uh, big girl. You're four years old, so I can't. Uh, your mother's name is your mother is Barbara Chernovsky. Cernikovsky. I got it better the second time. Can I? You also uh, have brought some books with you, didn't you? Can I see one of the books? Which one is the favorite book that you have? Can I see this here? Uh, read it yourself. Old MacDonald's Farm. Would you? Could you read one page for that? From that for us. Okay, you find the page that you want, darling, and we'll we'll just wait for you. Okay. Uh, could, would you, would you read what that says right there for me? What does that say? A farm. That's right, a farm. I want to show the people what you did here. I want to make sure they can see. Look at that, a farm. You are four years old, Jennifer. And this is your first child, is it, uh, Mrs. Uh, mm -hmm. Cernikovsky? Mm -hmm. you, uh, was your situation a nightmare as well in the hospital? It doesn't have to be, and we, we don't want to suggest that everybody in every hospital is not enlightened, but there are a lot of horror stories out there. It wasn't, actually. It was very good. I had a very good ob obstetrician. Right. And uh, obviously, I think waking up and being told that is going to be a nightmare. Um, it was handled well after that, though. The pediatrician knew about early intervention, right. knew about schools, knew what some of the children had been doing, and uh, it went from there, and it's, it's not been a nightmare. It's been a joy. And, and you've had a child since? Yes, a year later, 13 months later. And did you, may I ask how old you were when Jennifer was born? I think it was 33. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, now, you did not have amnio during Jennifer's not, pregnancy? Not for Jenny, no. Um, now, you, are, you say something very honest. You did have amnio for your second pregnancy. I did. And it's clear that you love your... Look at, look at this beautiful child. How, do you want to read that too, darling? Let me, hear, let me see you read that. Can you read yes. that for me? Old MacDonald had a farm. Old MacDonald had a farm. That's very good. Very good. You would not have continued the pregnancy had your second uh, pregnancy been uh, in the amniocentesis turned up a Down syndrome. Uh. No. That's very honest. Because what? You, you couldn't, there's a limit even to super mom here? Is that the reason? Well, um, she took a lot of work and she still takes a lot of work. Um, we've probably put in between an hour and two hours a day, very specific learning each day of her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is enough. <laughs> right. So at age 33, mm -hmm. you had Jennifer. Mm -hmm. And at age 36, approximately. 30, well, yeah, 35, I guess. 35, you had your second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and your second baby is as we oh, would say. he's fine. In fact, he gains by everything we're doing with her and was extremely verbal because of all the work that we're doing with her with sign language and everything he's he's benefited and actually is you know a little brighter than uh -huh. you do uh, you you compensate then for Jennifer more stimulation more attention definitely than? definitely and she, that, uh, 
that's what actually that's the new enlightenment isn't it i mean we can Definitely. keep there's really no reason then for in most cases for no for institutionalization i don't think so i think the the more time that you can really put in in the early very early years and really opening that mind up and making it curious um, the better off the child is later and and just to get schools that really do understand the fact that these kids can learn and they are a little slower in learning. Um, I think at this point, public education and education is our problem. Well, we still have Joey watching the show, so I I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't left us yet, has he? Huh? Well, um, one of the biggest problems that occurred in the perception of people with Down syndrome is because so many of the textbooks and so much of the written material came out of institutionalized samples. People who were writing these texts were going to a situation in which there was no stimulus. None at all. And that, therefore, what you would read about in texts was not descriptive of Down syndrome so much as it was descriptive of the results of institutionalization. We've been joined by Jason Kingsley, uh, and you've just met his mother, Emily. J as j was Jason mainstream? As uh, we say, or not? Or? Jason spent his educational career up to this point in classes which are designated for kids with learning disabilities, which is itself considered a real accomplishment. It's children who are essentially yeah. regular kids who need a smaller class. I know that, but I'm not sure there's a parent gets through uh, school today without, if he's got any number of kids at all, without an LD kid, I think. It's an alphabet soup, uh, whatever this means, LD, Absolutely. learning disabled. Learning disabled. What this means, though, is that But this is a victory for down families. Exactly, because they are ordinarily, they're shunted into trainable classes where they're, you know, I, I don't mean to put down trainable classes. There are a lot of kids who do very well in trainable classes. Our problem was when he was, they tried to put him in a trainable class without seeing what he could do first. Right. And uh, Diane Crutcher's uh, daughter, Mindy, joins us. We're so glad you're here, Mindy. We should say that you are 13 years old. And uh, you, I know you're proud of your mother as executive director of the National Down Syndrome Congress. Mindy and Jason and the other uh, children who are jo have joined us today are living testament to the fact that here are people who rely only on the love, understanding, and the absence of ignorance of the communities in which they are born. We have demonstrated already that these children are very very loving and also certainly capable of learning. We are also joined by George Stanford Brown, who is the producer-director of Kids Like the, These. Here's the man who uh, brought this to the screen. And yes, he is Tyne Daly's husband. And your interest in this, did you fall in love with the script immediately? or? Uh... Absolutely. Um, part of the reason, this was uh, the second project that was done by our company that we formed. And also, uh, it our intent has always been to do things that touch and reach people that are also can be used as teaching aids and this was uh, just a beautiful project that came, came across my desk. Let me show them uh, just a, f a scene from your film, George. This is where, uh, I don't know, what's your name in this film? Mrs. Joanna. Joanna. Joanna, Joanna realized, Joanna, is your, your son is communicating with you. Yes. Incidentally, you use five real Down syndrome children in this film. Absolutely. To, to uh, as the child grows in the film, five down children performed That's in your right. work. Here's this. Here's your child saying to you, "Who in effect? Who am I?" He's beginning to question himself. Yeah, uh, uh, a Down syndrome child certainly is educable, and then we have to deal with this catch twenty two of the more educable and aware beco they become, the more they realize the nature of their own difference. Yes. And how shall he and the parents deal with that? This is very compelling. Watch this scene. Mommy, call a face star. I want to order a new face, not like this face. I love this face. I was so proud of you tonight. You helped all those people so much. All those people with Down Syndrome kids. Mommy? Yes, darling? I'm sick and tired of all this Down Syndrome stuff. Go to sleep, sweetheart. When 
does it all go away? This is about an extra chromosome, isn't it? Right. People with Down syndrome, typically the most common form of Down syndrome, they have uh, three number 21 chromosomes. Most of us sitting in this room have two. Our kids have 47 chromosomes, three of which are trisomy 21, number 21. Trisomy 21. Right. So the presence of the third chromosome in the pair 21 will all be geneticists before the end of this century, yes. I hope. Uh, uh, causes a number of anomalies, true? That, well, in, in specifically number 21, an extra number 21 chromosome causes Down syndrome. And in that extra chromosome are a variety of genes, and those genes are active genes. And they do such things as um, mentally retard the people, typically to a certain extent. A curve malformation a of the heart. Curve a little, 40% of kids with Down syndrome have heart defects. Yeah. What were you going to say about curvature? Uh, the little fingers are curved inward. Uh, many times the syndrome will show one crease across the palm of a hand. This is when everybody looks at their palms. You will find that the uh, 52 characteristics that are present in people with, that may be present in people with Down syndrome are also present in the quote normal population. The issue of the syndrome is that they are more collective in the individual with Down syndrome. I see. But never all 52 in one Your person. respiratory system is one of the worst uh, breathing difficulties breathing could ensue. Dif Im immune yeah. factors. But, uh, and longevity was often uh, decreased, Impossible. limited within the... Eight to nine years. Now we have uh, Down syndrome adults living well past their 50s. Certainly, because we've got improving cardiological techniques to repair those defects. Uh -huh. We've got uh, antibiotics to take care of respiratory system problems. Whether Down syndrome people marry and if they pass on Down syndrome. Definitely. Definitely.